All right, what's the 411? How are you all this evening? I'm Brett Geschke, president of the Library Foundation's Associate Board. Thank you for joining the Chicago Public Library Foundation Associate Board for our readathon finale. And I'm Emily Schapler, events chair of the Associate Board. We're so grateful to all of you, not only for joining us this evening, but for reading with us over the last seven weeks. Um, before we get started, I do just want to give a special thanks to this year's Readathon sponsors Ben and Isaac Greenspan, in memory of Barbara Lewis, Clarity Partners, Angie and Jeff Houston, Susan and Bob Wislow, FCB Chicago, Linda and Richard Filler, Brenda Langstrat and Vey Bowie, US Cellular, Cathcart Family Foundation, Spark Kremen and Paul Dykstra, Ice Miller, Katz and Stefani, Maplewood Brewery and Distillery, Miller, Shockman, Levine, and Feldman, Ed Uline Family Foundation, and Winston and Strawn. My added thanks to our sponsors. For those of you joining us for the first time, the Associate Board is a group of young professionals dedicated to raising funds and awareness of the resources available for everyone for free at the Chicago Public Library. This year, our associate board set out to create an ultimate throwback initiative to bring readers of all ages together to take their reading habits to the next level and support Chicago Public Library. And throughout the course of Readathon, together we read 4,608 books total. We, that's right, major round of applause. We crushed our early goal of 300 participants and fundraising goal of 70,000 for a brand new campaign 453 participants collectively raised over $85,000 to support lifelong learning programs at Chicago Public Library. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of books. 59 totally rad teams participated in Readathon this year, and we had some very creative team names. So let's hear it for LeVar Burton fans, keeping it between the covers in the Mango House. The page turners, shelves of color, and the mignon bookworms. The bookworms, book babes, and Lisa Frank and the hypercolor library lovers had their reading list book solid enough to say reading is my favorite sport because after all, reading is lit. <laughs> Word warriors and reading divas managed to treat your shelves for a shack attack of booking it to bedtime. And all we can say is, let me, Let me baby, baby one baby. more time. <laughs> All right, Brett, I'm not sure we're making it onto TRL with that timing. Um, I think we've probably taken this bit as far as it can go. Okay, agreed. Um, you all deserve a round of applause. And I'd love to know what were some of your favorite books to read during the course of Readathon? Um, so we thought we were going to have the chat function available tonight. I don't think we do. So if you'd like to unmute yourself and kind of chime in and let us know what your favorite books were, go ahead over the next 30 seconds. Let's hear what your favorite books were. So my favorite book was the Lark that I bought home from school because I have a book bag and I bring home two books. One book for I read and one book that mommy read. Awesome. Love that. Amazing. Oh, we have a hand up here. Anthony K. The Kingdom of Renly series and Wings of Fire. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Anybody else want to call? Any grown ups? Out yeah, grown ups. What about you, Brett? What was your favorite thing? Uh, my favorite book that I read during Readathon was actually called Green Lights. It's Matthew McConaughey's new mm -hmm. memoir. It's a very unique, cool book. We have a hand up from Margaret Rivera. It looks like we have a young reader who wants to share. My favorite books I read were the Dumb Bunnies books. Oh, those are good. Like that. How about you, Emily? Did you have a favorite book in particular? I did. I finally read Mexican Gothic and I loved it. I'm not normally a scary story person, but I actually stayed up two different nights reading by flashlight because I really was so into it. So it was awesome. Dedication. Gotta respect <laughs> it. 
got to get them all in before the end of the campaign. That's right. Okay. Well, thanks for everybody to share. Anybody else? Any one last favorite books? If not, no worries. And um, on behalf of the entire associate board, just want to thank you. And now it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's host uh, and, and Library Foundation president and CD, CEO, Brenda Langstrat, who was especially rad in the 1990s. <laughs> we, have, we have proof. Yeah. Ah, so, yeah. yeah. But... So I did my best. I did not do that well in dressing 90s. But as you can see, I spanned from the very early 90s to the late 90s and a lot of different looks and a lot of hairspray. Um, we all have the, pers the people in our lives who introduced us to the love of reading. And I'm gonna say a special thank you to my mom and dad who are with us tonight, Phil and Karen Langstrat, um, who took me to the library as often as I wanted to. And it means so much that you're here. And tomorrow is my dad's birthday. So if we can give him a round of applause for being another year old. And let's also give them a round of applause for putting up with me in the 90s. Um, so <laughs> thank you, Emily and Brett, and thank you for uh, all of you for inviting us into your homes tonight. Um, I know we're all having fun with the 90s theme, it's super rad. Um, and we are all coming to you live from different areas in the Impact House. So the Impact House is where the Library Foundation has its offices. And it's also a shared office space with, with a number of other organizations that are doing great work so that we can better collaborate. But more about that to come. I really wanna say congratulations to the entire associate board. We have one of the finest associate boards in town and they set really ambitious goals for this campaign and they crushed these goals. And it is because of every single one of you who are here with us tonight. Um, so, and it also encourages us to pick up a book instead of all of the screen time that we have. We love that we can gather together on the screen, but how great is it to, um, if you are on a screen, to actually be reading a book or listening to an audio book. We have so many different uh, ways that we can access these resources. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Chicago Public Library Foundation, let me tell you a little bit about us. We are the fundraising partner to our great Chicago Public Library. And thanks to the generous support of our community of donors and library lovers, so each and every one of you, regardless of how old you are, um, the Library Foundation infuses vital resources into our public library system to better serve all Chicagoans. Together, we spark creativity and connection for all, close the academic opportunity gap, and bridge the digital divide. So with that, it is with immense pleasure that I introduce to you the new Chicago Public Library Commissioner, Chris Brown, who will share a little bit about his vision for CPL and to announce our cumulative reading and fundraising winners. So can I get a round of applause for Commissioner Brown, the boss of the Chicago Public Library is with us tonight, and that is pretty rad, right, Chris? Oh, it's wonderful to be here, and I'm, I'm trying to channel my 90s self as well, so I'm doing my best. <laughs> so, Commissioner Brown, in your first three and a half months here, you have visited every single one of our library branches, all 81 branches. So, during your listening tour, what have you been hearing from the community that will inform your goal of integrating equity across the Chicago Public Library system? Well, I think just getting a chance to see all of those different neighborhoods and meeting all of our staff, they're so passionate about programming and, and representation and just seeing such diverse neighborhoods and how our teams are, are really uh, making sure that when kids come in our spaces, they're seeing themselves reflected in our displays and our collections and our programs. Um, we did a lot of programming recently for Asian American Heritage Month and uh, a lot of what was covered in the press, uh, our staff had planned those programs. So we just have a lot of pride for what they're doing. Uh, I think definitely seeing, seeing our staff do programming like the Social Justice Reading Circle at Woodson Regional Library and they're looking to carry that forward into their Juneteenth programming with uh, an event that's highlighting Richard Wright's unpublished second novel. So that's something we're really looking forward to. So I think we're, we're wanting to give them a, a larger platform and support their programming efforts. And thanks to the efforts of the 
foundation and all of your fundraising, they're really, really equipped with the resources to do that. Thank you, Commissioner. So every dollar that you all have raised is going to support a lot of these programs, especially as we come out of the pandemic that are going to be so, so critical. Um, so before I get to the next question, Commissioner Brown, where were you living before here? And how do you feel about being in Chicago? So before coming to Chicago, I was in California. I was in uh, Silicon Valley, but actually I spent my early 20s in Uptown in Chicago. So it's kind of a, a coming home. And really my, my library journal journey really started in that, in that community of Uptown, met their library staff and kind of got inspired by them. And because of them and how engaged they were with me and the residents, they, they opened my eyes to exploring this as a career. That's great. Um, so coming full circle. So uh, one more question before I get to the scripted questions, Commissioner. Um, I asked you when you first moved back here, um, Cubs fan or White Sox fan? And you said, you know what? I will love them equally both. But you do not have a choice on is being a Bears fan, especially because we have Israel Adonage here tonight um, that we will hear from later, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Israel, I like the chain. <laughs> okay, so a couple of questions that we thought would be fun. If you could travel to one place you've read about in a book, what place would you visit and what book was it from? You know, I, 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 it, I'm back in Chicago and I, I always liked um, Grant A. Katz's, you know, book about Alinea and his sort of journey and creating that space. And I, I'm super lucky because now I'm back in Chicago where I'd love to be. And now I can, can can try out that restaurant, which I've always read about and seen seen on TV. So I'm kind of, I'm exactly where I want to be. I'm in Chicago. Well, as a foodie, you are in the right place. Um, what is your favorite book quote and why? Well, I, I think because we're all coming out of the pandemic, we've, we've kind of, for many of us, have had parts of our lives on hold. We haven't been able to travel as much as we might want to. I really have always liked uh, Mary Oliver's poem, uh, Summer Day. And her quote is tell, is, tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And I just, I love that quote because I think we're all looking forward to exploring our worlds again and the city and getting back to traveling and having that kind of rich quality of life. It's a really important time to be as creative as possible, right? So especially for the, the, the younger ones with us tonight, it's a time to really dream big. Um, okay, so now it is time, Commissioner Brown, for you to announce our cumulative reading and fundraising challenge winners. What an honor that we have you here tonight, um, the head of Chicago Public Library to read off our winners. So I am going to let you go for it. And thank you again for all of your support, all of our generous donors and fundraisers. Uh, so in the adult reader category, our top reader was Rebecca Mar Marhofer. Becca read 103 books and as our top fundraiser and our top fundraiser goes to Lisa Bowl, who raised $1,350. Let's give it a, a round of applause for them. Nice work. And then in the youth reader category, coming in with 250 books, you are all amazing. That's incredible. And taking the top youth reader prize is Isla of Isla, Isla's Readathon. Let's give a round of applause for Isla. And the top youth fundraiser goes to Cordelia of Cordelia's fundraising page, who raised $371. Wow. Wonderful job. And in the teams category, our top reading team was Shelves of Color with 260 books. Amazing, that's, that's incredible. I don't know how you guys have time for anything else. <laughs> and and uh, last but not least, the top fundraising team was Read Erect, raising $2,050. Wow, just incredible. 
And to think of how far we have gone beyond our goal and we're still raising money. You all have been so generous. We're so grateful. Again, um, Commissioner Brown, thank you so much for being here with us and for, for dressing in your 90s. We, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and we are so excited to embark on this work together. And those of you who are with us tonight, come along for what is going to be such an important journey for the Chicago Public Library, but also library systems throughout our country, throughout our world. Um, congratulations to our amazing readers and fundraisers. I am just blown away. What a success. Um, after a conversation with our special guests, we will pull raffle winners, so stay tuned. And as a quick reminder, for those of you who have completed our reading challenges, your prizes will be delivered by June 30th. Um, before we go any further, though, I really want to celebrate the Chicago Public Library Foundation staff team. What an extraordinary group of people to be, talk about being on a journey, to be on this journey with. They have come together with resilience and focus and commitment and patience and you know ambition and they're entrepreneurs and um and they pulled off this first time initiative you know along of course with the associate board sparking the idea and our staff team along with the associate board has just like run with it and so the entire team um we just thank you so much um, we had these weekly friday meetings about readathon and I would uh, tell the team that was especially focused on Readathon, led by Veronica Brown, who really envisioned the associate board from the beginning and has supported the associate board in being the one, one of the best in the city. And um, I said, don't tell any of the other team members, but this is really the most fun meeting of the entire week. So, so we're going to have to do this again in the future, I think, is the bottom line. Um, so if there is one thing, speaking of, that we've learned over the years, that now more than ever, we have to lean on our communities. At the Library Foundation, we are so grateful um, for you, our associate board, board of directors, library partners, and the greater nonprofit community for being our strength over the course of this year. Through the Readathon, we've come together from all over Chicago and beyond. We have readers from across the country and of all ages. Again, we are moved by the power of the library to unite us. With that in mind, it is my pleasure to welcome our dear friend, author, former Bears defensive lineman, entrepreneur, civic leader, and founder of Fabric Impact House, which again is where we are tonight, Israel Adonage, to share his thoughts on community and how we can continue to build an even stronger social fabric the pun is in, always intended, get it? We're in the fabric impact house um, during this time and into the new normal. As we hear from Izzy, we invite you to consider with us what you want to take with you into a post pandemic world. And on a personal note, I've gotten to know Israel over the years, even in former jobs that I was in and uh, what a community leader and what a community builder. And he does it with with focus and care and big heart. And um, so Israel, we're so excited to have you here with us tonight and thank you. Thank you for um, having me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> so Izzy, everybody ha here tonight has a library story, right? In the way that the library shaped us. Um, share with us your library story. Well, you know, it's interesting. My, I grew up once a week going to the library. You know, we, we were a family with modest means. And, you know, because of that, my mother specifically had to be creative about keeping us engaged. So as children, we had to, we were only allowed to watch one hour of television a day. Uh, we had to read one hour. We had to play our, an instrument for one hour. Yeah. And, you know, as I, at the time I had a, I was a, a paper boy and, you know, I would, you know, have my, I'd, I'd make my money, my paper out. I'd get my little candy. I used to get these Slurpees, you know, the little Slurpee <laughs> jugs. And I'd, I'd read my, my books that we got from the library. And, and you know, it was a really fond moment as, as a child. At the time we'd all go to the library together. You'd have your backpack full of books. And, and it's just the work that, that we do here with, with the libraries is so important because it really sets our kids up for incredible lives, not just the reading, but also reading comprehension, being able to yeah. read something, understand it, unpack it, articulate it to someone else. You know, that's a skill set that 
through reading at a young age, you begin to develop and, and, and really strengthen that gift. You know, so to all of our kids here, give yourself some love. I don't know if we yeah. said, I mean, all your beautiful faces. It's just great to see uh, just such great talent. We have big expectations for all of you. Uh, <laughs> for me, the libraries were, were so critical at a young age to my development. Yeah, Israel, you and I have talked a lot, especially when you, we were doing some work with, with the school district, right, years ago, about right. that importance of the spark of learning, you know, when that, when that transition is made from learning to read to reading to learn. And mm. that's where the, the joy enters in, right? And there's yes. no, no, more, no other place like a public library to experience that. I, I really appreciated the way that you were describing um, the public library as a family affair. And, um, you know, so I, in, in that context, I would love um, for you to talk a little bit about your vision for the Impact House, because it does feel like a family, you know, in so many ways here. And, you know, your approach to community is in a family sort of way. So what does this community here at Impact House mean to you? And, you know, how have you created this so that, you know, the community really means something to um, us as individual organizations coming together? Yeah, this, 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 project has been so special and, and you're spot on, you know, it's, it's community, it's family, it's a team, you know, playing for the Bears floor for 10 years, you know, building a team, learning how to work together as a team in order to accomplish a goal, in order to make it to the Super Bowl, to win a game is something that I really connect with in building anything, right? And, and Impact House, the vision of it was all of us, community members, families, organizations, individuals coming together in order to win. Winning ultimately mean, meaning, can we make our city better? Can we impact the lives of our children? Can we support areas in our city that really need some additional support? That's the win here uh, as far as the Impact House team, the Chicago community and what we're trying to build here. And there's so many levels, you know, when in, in football, when you talk about how do you win, right? Winning is about each player individually doing their job. And that's the same when it comes to winning in a community, to achieving a goal for a community, to, to helping our kids win their dreams and win their goals, right? It's about all of us doing their jobs. And public libraries, they, it, the public libraries are a player in that dream. They have a role yeah. to play in that dream as far as just making our community members stronger, helping them to develop, helping them to learn. You know, I, I'm a really strong believer in, in lifelong learning, right? Regardless of... Yeah how old you are, how young you are, you can always learn and you can always you know, strive to level yourself up. And with the public libraries, it's, it's free, right? It's a place you can go yeah. to and, and, and just soak up all that information and all that knowledge. And Impact House, you know, having organizations like Chicago Public Libraries as a part of this family, it's just so special. And it's just the beginning, right? We've been here only together a year now and we have over 20 organizations, over 200 people that are part of this community and it's growing you know, every day, every week. I'm so excited and I consider myself, I'm just a player on the team. The way that I was <laughs> defensive end for the Bears and my role was just to sack the quarterback. My role here is just to come here and support and connect and shed and share love with everybody. And, and to the best of my ability, I just look forward to doing my job and, and making my plays as far as our impact community here. I love all those connections and we see it lived out in knowing you, um, Izzy. So I'm gonna go off script for a minute and ask you another question. Um, how, how, do you, how do you pay it forward and mentor you know, other athletes who are looking to get involved in community? And you know, how, do you, uh, how do you bring them along and you know, help them identify the causes you know, that, um, that are attractive to them and kind of like resonate with their own value system? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, as a young athlete, I was fortunate to get to where I was because I had mentorship, I had guidance, I had support, both on the field and off the field. And a part of the vision for Impact House here is to do that, right? So many athletes, you know, they make, they make it uh, in the field, in, uh, in their sport, and they want to give back, they want to reconnect. And, and sometimes it's, 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 a, it's really challenging learning who to give to, how to give, how do you want to impact your community with your gifts? And we want those athletes to come to Impact House, connect with us. If an athlete says, hey, I want to learn or I want to give and, and support kids in education and in literacy, 
we are then able to connect them with great organizations like the Chicago Public Library Foundation, right? Connect them with great people, you know, like Brenda. And that's the, the vision here that these athletes that are so talented, that have big hearts, they can come to a place where there's resources that they can trust and we yeah. can connect them with those resources that they can do the work that they don't replicate or, or, or do yeah. work that's already being done. Let's join forces so we can be more efficient together. It's a great question. And you know, trust is such an important part of community. So that you just yeah. brought up that word is 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 really central. Um, so so that kind of brings me to like building strong communities. So you know, again, as someone who is driven by building strong communities, what what is a lesson or the lessons that you'll be taking from this past year and into the new normal? You know, communities. Um, you know, we've we've come together in so many different ways. Um, we've also been disconnected in a number of ways and we're ready to reconnect. So if you could talk a little bit about that. You know, I think first, all of us, we're, we're social beings, right? We're, we were, we're meant to connect, to lock arm in arm, regardless of our challenge, our struggle, what we're facing, right? It's just when we're together, we're stronger. And, and sometimes when the world gets dark, sometimes when we face challenges, you know, the, the instinct is to protect yourself, to, to go inside. And through this pandemic, more than ever, I've realized that our strength really is in coming together, right? Our strength is really in loving one another, joining forces, standing back to back. I have your back, you have my back. Mm -hmm. With that approach as a community, as, as family, as, as Chicagoans, there's nothing that we can't face together. There's nothing that we can't overcome. And, and through this last year, we've never as a community faced anything like we have faced through this pandemic. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just so important now, even more so that we've been, you know, sheltered in place, that all of these things have happened in our world, you know, beyond just the pandemic, that we, we reconnect with one another, that we can start to like build ourselves up, build one another up. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really confident that this, the future, that the road ahead is, is going to be brighter for all of us. Oh, I love that. I feel inspired, you know, and I think we're all, even with, with the weather warming, we're ready for it. We're ready to see each other and, and yeah. reconnect. Thank you. That was really inspiring. Okay. We're going to talk, you know, kind of like we did with Commissioner Brown um, about uh, some of your favorite books. So what is your favorite book of all time and why? Mm. So I, my favorite book of all time, interesting question. No, I, I've got a few books I love. One, so I've written uh, a series of books called The Dreamy Kids Adventures. So those books have a, they have a special place in my heart, as well as, you know, growing up, I was a big comic book fan. So I also wrote a comic yeah. book called The Protectors, was, was you know, just a, a vision I had to like tell a comic story and, and I did it. And, and so that also has a, a near and dear place to my heart. Then the moral of that story is to all of our kids and adults listening, Whatever it is in life that you want to do, that you want to create, you can do it, right? If I can, a football player, write a kid's book, create a comic book, any of you guys can create and do anything that you dream of doing. And, you know, that, that project was just so special to, to think about it, to dream it, and then to actually do it and, and to bring it to life. Other books that I love, I love... The Call of the Wild, which was an incredible story. I, I grew up as a dog fan. I love dogs. I was like a dog savant as a kid. I, any statistic about any dog, I mean, I just would rattle those statistics off and just, I love dogs. It was my dream actually one day to be a veterinarian. So I'd love the, the story Call of the Wild. I love The Alchemist. Um, it's a story just about the journey of life, I think, that really connects with all of us. How that your journey of life, regardless of how challenging it might seem, that you know, when it's all said and done and you look around, like you were right where you were supposed to be through some of life's yeah. moments and the, the resources and the people and the things that that you 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 thought were working against you were really all a part of a plan to help you get to a place where you needed to be. And I think that's just something that we can all hold near and dear as as far as a lesson in life. Absolutely. And that's what books teach us. And we did have an opportunity here in the Impact House to meet your, your dog when it was a puppy. And I know some of our staff members, Kate and Arden, talking about you, you know, <laughs> grabbed that puppy immediately. Yes. Um, 
So, so uh, one more question, and then we get to see a special clip of you reading for live from the library. Um, so, if you could be best friends with an author, who would you choose, and why? Ooh, ooh, interesting, great question. So, I would probably say, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, I'm a big comic book fan, and when you when it comes to comics, what's always so incredible to me is how these writers build this incredible universe that has just so many layers and stories and backstories and origin stories of all these characters. So because of that, I'd probably say Stan Lee would be an author yeah. that I would want to like, I'd like just to spend a couple of days with Stan and learning his writing style and, and just how he created some of the best comic superhero stories that, that we know. You're getting a number of hearts and claps on that one, Izzy. So, okay, so everyone who is here, um, Israel is about to announce our raffle winners, so stay tuned. But before we do that, I wanted to share a clip of Israel reading on our Live from the Library program. So this is a program, an initiative that we started when the library doors had to close, and we really wanted to be sure that story time continued for children and families. Um, Israel um, signed up right away saying, I'll do it, I'll read one of my books. And so he read in the first week, um, and now months and months later, more than a year later, rather, um, we are at 22 million views in 42 countries for live from the library. So Israel, thank you for being among the first readers um, for this program. And um, we can run this quick clip and then it's raffle winner time. So drum roll after this. Hi, welcome to Live at the Library. My name is Israel Idanaje. You can call me Izzy. Today, we get to read a book together. I used to play football for the Chicago Bears, 10 incredible seasons, but I also loved kids' books. So today, I have three kids' books. Of these books, we're going to get to read one together. You know, I always thought that it was really important for us to learn and talk about the incredible people in our lives that love us. Mom, dad, they love you, your teachers love you, your brothers, your sisters, but there's one person that needs to love you a whole lot. And that person is you, okay? So I Love Me is about learning about our bodies, learning about yourself, and learning about all the incredible things that make you, you, that you should love. So can we read this book together? Let's do it. So, the first page says, this book is de dedicated to the young girls and boys all over the world who will make our world a more loving place. Give yourselves a big hug. So wherever you are, go ahead, give yourselves a big <laughs> hug because you love yourself, all right? I Love Me by Israel Adanje, by me. I Love Me, a special kid with lots of gifts for all the world to see. From head to toe, my light will glow bright and beautifully. I love that. We should give ourselves at least one hug every day, don't you yes. think? Yes. That, that is good. Okay. So um, again, Israel, thank you for taking the time to be with us tonight. Um, yeah. Before before Israel announces the raffle winners, can we just give him a big applause, please? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now the moment that we have been waiting for. Um, okay, Israel, do you have your list in front of you? Drum roll. Okay. okay, let's do this. Uh, winning the All That in a Bag of Chips raffle package is... David Bowles, you're the lucky winner. <laughs> Woo! Congrats, David. Okay, and the <laughs> lucky, I missed this title, oh my goodness. And the lucky winner of Party Time Excellent, <laughs> I could probably do that better, <laughs> um, package is? <laughs> Erica Ricky. Woo! Congratulations. And winning the Shy City Fly City package, we've got Avani Narang. Yay! Avani, congratulations, Avni. Congratulations, who is a member of our Impact House as well. Yes. Taking home, what's the 312 is? Joyce Chen. Congratulations. Congratulations, Joyce. 
Um, this one is for the Rugrats and going home with? Cordelia Cleary. Congratulations. Congratulations, um, congrats. And taking home the lovely package for, uh, wait, lovely package for you and your boo. Is <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Van Hove. A uh, lucky, a uh, lucky boo there. Okay. Um, and to close it out with Maxon and Chillaxon. Julian Sui. All right. Congratulations. Congrats, everyone. Congratulations to all of our winners. Again, Commissioner Brown, Israel, John Ajay, thank you so much for being with us. What an honor to every single reader. Thank you. Please stay close to our Library Foundation community. We would love for you to uh, continue to be involved and learn more. And with that, Emily and Brett, I'm going to um, toss it back to you to uh, close us out. Thank you so much, Brenda and Izzy. What a wonderful conversation. Um, Brett, do you have any things you've learned during Readathon that you will take with you into your new normal? Yeah, I think over the past seven weeks, I've really valued the concept of carving time out to read on a daily basis over the last seven weeks, not always possible when things get busy, but just kind of whether it's before bed or after dinner or in the bathtub, just like reading and doing it every day. And, you know, this time was a was kind of goal oriented, but it just actually was helpful in life to just kind of compartmentalize things, put work away, put other stressors away and just like get into a book. And so I, you know, something I plan to continue going on forward even after this readathon. How about you? I agree. Same. I feel like, uh, you know, I have a tendency to get trapped in my phone and this was a perfect excuse to put it down and pick up a book. And I feel like I also read things I'd been meaning to read for a while, things of different lengths, different genres. So it was a really good excuse to rediscover what I love so much about reading. I hear you on the screen time for sure. Uh, and that's great. Um, so yeah, I hope that you've all enjoyed the program this e evening. And uh, thank you again for all of you, for all that you've done as a community to support all Chicagoans who rely on library resources. Um, if you're ever interested in joining our associate board, please visit us at cplfoundation.org or email us at membership at cplfoundation.org. Um, and so that's it. And we will see you on the flip side. <laughs>